The landscape for massively multiplayer RPGs has evolved over the last few years and the audience has followed suit. Where we were once used to paying subscription fees for this type of content, our expectations have changed. But some people involved with creating the latest MMOs still think that subscriptions have a place in the industry today. We asked them for their thoughts on the matter and why they think the model can still be relevant. I, I don't think that you could take subscriptions and just sort of liberally apply it to all games and say, well, these guys didn't do it well, therefore it doesn't work anymore. I think each game is unique. There have certainly been examples um, in recent past of MMOs that tried to do a subscription and they didn't succeed. I think you could have a reasonable argument amongst reasonable people as to whether or not the problem in that case was the subscription or the game and what it offered and what it, um, whether it was worth the subscription. If we succeed and we're releasing stuff that pe make people say, this is worth my money, I got more out of this $15 in terms of what I'm getting to do um, in this game than I would have if I had um, applied that towards any other game or anything else. So it's a value proposition. We feel pretty strong about the, the support that we're going to have for the game and what you're going to get for those dollars. And ultimately, we think fans are going to agree. Appreciating, it's not for everybody. Um, but no game is really for everybody. If, if this is the kind of game that you want to play and you're willing to put down subscription money, then um, it's an option. If you're straight up not willing to pay a subscription, then we recognize that you're not going to play it. But we're not trying to make a game that like everybody who plays games will automatically buy. There is a version of this where we could have said, we're not going to charge a subscription and we are going to allocate whatever percentage of the team to make stuff that we can that we can afford or support based on the base sale of the game, but we decided that's not the that's not what we want to do. Like that just seems like a lesser game, and we're not going to make a lesser game that that might be more palatable. We want to do the version of the thing that we think is the best game and the coolest experience. In contrast, MMO Wildstar from Carbine Studios runs a slightly different subscription model. Game Time consumes a resource named Cred, which can be purchased using real-world money or in the game using in-game gold. This means the more time you spend playing the game and gathering gold, the more you can extend your time to play the game to gather more gold. Our intention with Cred is that, as we looked at the market, it seemed like the best way to get some key things that we wanted. Firstly, obviously, people want to play for free. If we could support that while being responsible financially, we wanted to. Secondly, some folks want to buy in-game goodies for cash. They have extra money. They want to put that to work for them in the game because maybe they don't have the time to go in and play for tons of hours. We looked at Lineage, for instance. For every dollar people paid us in subscriptions, the size of the Korean eBay market said that about $5 was spent by other players buying weapons and castles. This meant that we might make $200 million on the game. But, people were paying over a billion, for instance, showing that there was a market there. So the joy of the model is it pairs these people, person B buys cred, and trades it safely on the commodities exchange. No scamming, no hacking. Person A buys it for gold, and both players are happy. Win and win. Carbine Studios described the value of the game as being in line with what players paid for in subscriptions. Our intention has been to be as aggressive with content drops as was feasible, while also supporting a massive live game. We have multiple teams working on drops as we speak. Entire zones worth of quest, path and event content will be released throughout the year. We feel that this gives us an edge in the MMO space, because we are providing the customer with the most value, not to mention the most fun, for their subscription. Final Fantasy XIV A Realm Reborn launched for PC, PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4 less than 12 months ago. Like in The Elder Scrolls Online, its users pay a subscription fee. But why was this the best model to go with? Director and producer Naoki Yoshida explains. Well, 
It all comes down to the uh, market and the requirements and the needs from the players and the mar particular market. Currently, uh, we, we are running the subscription business model, and I think it's going smoothly. So there's no immediate plan that uh, we are to switch to a free-to-play model or anything like that. Um, that being said, uh, we are considering uh, introducing a free trial system, which uh, will allow players to try out the game for approximately maybe around 10 days for free, and if they like it, they can uh, purchase the, the retail version. That kind of idea we definitely investigating at the moment. I'm not saying that uh, we have to have the subscription model, so maybe in the future time will come. It all comes down to if we receive enough, well, a lot of requests from players and what we want to focus in the future. But uh, the, the most important thing is to have an uh, enjoyable, great game. Uh, otherwise, uh, neither uh, model would be successful. Despite a precedent set by other MMOs switching to a free-to-play model, these games have managed to make subscriptions work. What do you think? Could these be the last major MMOs to launch with a subscription fee? Could Wildstar be onto something, with players able to pay for time using in-game currency? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below.